Hello everyone and welcome to the Dark Table from A to Z series. In today's video we're going to take a brief look at the Lua programming language OpenCL and the Dark Table Chart 2. Dark Table has an integrated programming language called Lua. Lua is an open source programming language that uh, you can find in uh, multiple open source programs but as well in uh, commercial programs and it's used for process and task automation. If you're not familiar with Lua, I will put a uh, link to the user manual in the description below. You can use it to run predefined actions on at specific events. For instance, uh, if you wanted to use uh, an external program to view the uh, uh, your photo or edit it, once you export it, you can set it set it up in Lua so that every time you export an image in a dark table, it automatically opens it in that external program. Dark table will automatically run two Lua scripts at startup, one in the user's configuration uh, directory and another one in the general installation directory. Configuration directory in the user is called under under dot config dark table on Linux. So in here I can create a file and call it Lua RC, which is the name that uh, dark table automatically looks for to run at startup. Now I can type in print hello world, save it, and now if I've done my job correctly, once a dark table starts, it will just print out hello world. Let's give that a, a try. So we're gonna start dark table from the console to be able to see the hello world message started and let's see all right error messages not related to what we've done and here you go hello world now learning the programming language is way beyond the scope of this uh, video series as we want to talk about dark table and not programming but if you're interested in it there is a lot of resources online about how to program in Lua and all of them work with dark table you could do a lot of interesting things with it you can uh, export directly to an on online storage for instance if you uh, I don't know use uh, Google Drive or anything similar you can uh, set it up to save your uh, exported images uh, there or to an FTP server. Uh, you can uh, use uh, external tools to uh, sharpen your images after processing them in Darktable or uh, anything of the sort. Again, I will leave the uh, links to all the resources in the description and you can check them there if you're interested in programming. Okay, so let's as well discuss briefly the memory requirements and configuration in Darktable. It is recommended that you have at least 4 GB of uh, RAM memory and an extra 8 GB of swap. A swap is a reserved space on your hard disk that can be used to swap the memory into the on the hard disk when it's not being used to free it to be used with other things in theory you could have lower uh, memory than so lower than four and have more swap space but then your uh, system will be really slow and you will be using your heart your hard disk quite a lot as memory isn't very expensive nowadays stick to the minimum requirements and ha make sure that your computer has at least 4 gigabytes. If you're still using a 32-bit processor, go out and get a new one. No, I'm just kidding. 
if for some reason you're still on a 32-bit computer, then the maximum amount of memory that computer can have is 4 gigabytes, which automatically means that you can't have all of your memory for dark table, so there will be a lot less available memory to work with. Darktable has workarounds around that and it works but you're gonna have to all kinds of problems. The way uh, Darktable gets around that is uh, by a process called tiling where instead of uh, processing the whole image at once uh, it separates it into different tiles and to do those uh, sequentially so that uh, it won't use a lot of memory however this is by default slower than doing it all but as well it can lead to things like memory uh, fragmentation if you remember that from hard disk fragmentation in the old days which leads to slower performance etc etc I will not go into details on how to set it up to work on a 32-bit system as the 64-bit processing is what is it 17 years old now or something along these lines so I expect most users would have a 64-bit processor if by mistake you've installed a 32-bit um, operating system then you would have those problems as well even if the hardware supports it your software won't you can find all the details on how to make a dark table work on a 32-bit system in the user manual however I'd recommend that you upgrade your OS you won't have any memory related problems on a 64-bit system. You just have to make sure that you have enough memory, physical memory, physical RAM, and you're good to go. Next, let's talk about OpenCL. The dark table uses OpenCL to make use of your uh, GPU or video adapter hardware acceleration to improve performance while processing images. Well, according to the user manual, uh, Darktable has been uh, manually uh, fine-tuned for performance and this is done while not compromising any quality, so it should work and it does work. I've been using it for these sessions without OpenCL, so it works without it. But if you're processing big image files and adding lots of modules then you could start start noticing slowness or your fan working overtime or your computer's fan GPUs nowadays have a lot of processing power embedded in them uh, that is usually used for gaming uh, but even if you're not a gamer any modern GPU that you buy nowadays have a lot of processing power in it so why not use it for what you want, you are doing, and let Darktable uh, take advantage of it. OpenCL is a uh, open standard for programming languages to use GPU processing. But fear not, it's not like Lua, a, a, pro a user programming language. It's something that's done in the background. It's been programmed into Darktable to use it, and you don't have to do much to get uh, to get it working so what are the requirements well you need a graphics adapter of course it needs to have at least one gigabytes of memory ram on it separate from your computer ram the memory the gpu needs to have its own ram it does but it needs to have at least one gigabyte and then it needs to support opencl you can check that on your uh, vendors website most modern GPU cards would support it well on Linux you might have to install the OpenCL libraries apart uh, yourself uh, it depends on your Linux distribution and you have to check as well whether the uh, open source driver that you're using supports them for that particular card that you have or not otherwise you might have to install the vendor supplied driver once you have all of that in place, you can check that it's running or actually enabled in the settings and then CPU, GPU, memory. And if you have all of that, you'll be able to enable OpenCL support here. Again, it's not enabled here because it's a conscious decision to 
not enable it on this uh, virtual machine. You can as well get your hands dirty, so to speak, and go and fine tune all of the OpenCL configuration of Darktable. However, this will require that you learn a little bit about where to configure them and how and how, what the effect will be on your system and on the performance and it's really beyond the scope that about of what we're talking about it's all in the user manual the link is below if you're really interested go ahead fill your boots next we have a uh, dark table tool called dark table chart the purpose of this tool is to extract from a jpeg image and its raw image a settings of or style if you want that you can apply to other images to produce the same jpeg style as the one that you inputted in the uh, in the dark table chart so for example if you have uh, a camera that uh, produces a uh, effect or a film style that you particularly like then you can use the camera to produce the jpeg image and then load the raw file and the J jpeg image into dark table chart you'll get a style that you can apply in dark table later on other raw files to produce the same effect that's it for this time uh, i know that it was all short introductions and we didn't go in detail on any of the topics but this is more a uh, introductory video to those uh, utilities or functions as I don't see that they're really interesting to a lot of people online uh, certainly they're not all very interesting to me it's good to know that they're there and you can refer to them when you need them but even if you actually learn about them now I think by the time you want to use them you'll have to actually to reread the manual and get get into the details again so we'll leave it at that I still hope that you found it uh, enjoyable and useful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.